Hey team, welcome back to my channel. The source code for this video is available on my GitHub account. Just follow the arrows. Before we write the program in Python to go to CoinGecko, let's make sure it works in Postman. Notice I have the URL here. I'm getting a git. So HTTPS api.coingecko.com slash api version three simple price and then ids equals ripple ampersand and then the vs currencies equals usd so when i execute that hit the send button and notice it goes out and it tells me the current price for ripple you know xrp is 661588 Let's begin with the Python. Notice we're using 3.11. The name of my file will be called request.py. Now I'm going to start by importing request. Now on your local machine, if you don't have that available, just use the pip command. So pip install request. That should get you running. The first thing I normally do is I, I test for main, you know, using the name variable that gets us running. So we now have a function that we need to write here called main. So just say define function main. So you can see I've stubbed out main. We have a try and an exception. And inside of this try, we need to call one other function. And that function will be called get crypto price. And I'm gonna send in the symbol. So all we do is we come down here and we're gonna say, uh, let's go ahead and create a variable and we'll say like XRP price that equals the name of this function, and we're gonna send in what to look for. And I want you to look for Ripple. Once this function is written, it will return the price for the XRP coin. Hey, it worked. And notice I'm just gonna print out the price that we received. Now we can see from main, I'm gonna call get crypto price. I'm gonna send in the symbol that we're looking for, and then I'm gonna try something. So let's begin. So the first thing we're gonna say is a response. And what is response equal? Well, we're going to say request. Make sure you put that S there. Get. So you can see I've taken symbol, have symbol here, and then we have ampersand, a new variable, VS currencies. Notice I want to get USD. That will come back to response. As you can see, after we execute the get verb, then we're going to raise the statuses. Now, status 200 means it was successful, and we got the price back into response. On line 12, you can see we're building crypto price. I'm going to get that response is JSON, and we're going to build a dictionary. Now, if symbol's unknown, that will be empty. And then we're going to go get the USD as the currency type. That will be in crypto price. Now, if everything is good, we can actually say return crypto price. Now, um, you're probably wondering, what if crypto price doesn't have a value? So we can say, if crypto price is none, then we're just going to raise a, a value error. And we're just going to say there was like no price available. Does that make sense? Excellent. Okay, so our, our try is done. And remember, HTTP error, well, those are the 404, the 500s, all of those type errors. So this is standard code. In fact, whenever you're doing your program, all you have to do is cut and paste this code, and this should work for you. And that's the HTTP error. Now we're dealing with the exceptions, request exceptions. And finally, at the very bottom is like, you know, like in a perfect world, we execute the try. But down here on this accept exceptions, something unknown has happened. And I'll return that to the user. So there we have it. We have our get crypto function. We have our main function. We tested name for main. Let's go ahead and save this. And then let's try to run this. As you see, the current price for XRP is 66 cents. Now let's just change this and go get the Stellar XML. Notice I will spell Stellar wrong, and I'm gonna reuse our variables. As you can see, the spelling error raised an error, and it was captured. So if I put an A there, now it should work fine. And it's 12 cents. And that's the end of this video. If you have any questions or comments about this code, please uh, leave them below.